second problem, we're learning to use the graphing calculator to construct confidence intervals for us. Um, the thing you want to do when you construct a confidence interval with a graphing calculator is you want to record the data from the problem. That's about the only thing you want to have written out from the word problem so that it's easy to enter into the calculator. So I've chosen two problems here that have done that for us. They give us um, the data from the problem, so they went through the word problem already, and they selected the confidence level, they selected the sample size, they selected the sample mean, and the standard deviation. So we're going to use this information to construct these confidence intervals for us. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is to pull up our calculator, and we want to look at where that option is located in the calculator. So it's pretty straightforward. To get to this feature in the calculator, you're going to press the stat menu, so press the stat button here. Now you're going to arrow over to where it says test. So arrow over to where it says test. Now you're going to see a few options on your screen there. At first you see a Z test, a T test, and then a bunch of other things that say test. But if you look down at the last one there in the list, it says Z interval. So that's actually what we want here. And the reason why we're choosing Z interval is, uh, you know, that actually depends on the class you're taking and what your professor wants you to do. I'll just show you two possible explanations for why we would use Z in the problem. So the first possible explanation is that the sample size for both problems is large. In other words, both problems have sample sizes which are over 30. 30. So because we have 36 and 31 here, both of these sample sizes are large enough to assume that we can use the Z interval. That's if your professor is using that criteria. On the other hand, if you're using a more formal criteria, then you would be looking also to see if the population standard deviation is known. And then if you combine the fact that the sample sizes are large and the population standard deviation is known, then it's safe to use Z. So again, we'll be choosing option 7 in this case because that's the information, or that's the scenario that allows us to use the Z interval. Okay, so both of these problems uh, can be solved using the Z interval. We're going to take option 7. All right, so we take option seven, and then when we get in there, it's gonna ask us what we wanna work with. Are we working with summary statistics or are we working with actual raw data? So these are summary statistics. We don't have all the individual values. In other words, we don't have the 36 data values that, came, that were used to come up with the sample mean. We just have the sample mean. So in that case, we should be in stats. So if stats isn't highlighted, you're gonna arrow your cursor over to it and hit enter to highlight it. Then we're going to push down to where it wants the standard deviation. And the calculator is pretty smart. It knows that if you're doing the Z interval, you should be using sigma here instead of S. Of course, again, if your teacher is not doing the most formal approach, then you can use S here as long as your sample size is large. But in our case, uh, the calculator asks for sigma, so we're going to enter sigma. So we're going to enter the 11,024. Okay. Now once you have that entered, you just push down and enter your X bar. That's 85,113, so 85,113. Then go down to the N. Now if you remember our N in this problem, the first problem was 36, so we're going to use that. So N is 36. Okay, so type 36 for N. And then down to the confidence level. Now in this case, the confidence level for our problem is 95%. 95%, so we'll go ahead and enter that in as well. Okay, so we enter 95 or 0.95. Come down here to where it says calculate, press enter, and that's it. It produces the interval right away for us, and basically we find the answer is 81,512 up to 80,714. And then it provides you with the sample mean and the end that you used in the problem. All right, so we have our confidence interval, right? Those are our two numbers, our lower bound and our upper bound. So 81,512, 88,714. All right, let's do problem number two then next. Okay, so it's the same thing again. You're going to press stat. You're going to arrow over to where it says calculate. You're going to take option seven all the way down here at the bottom of the viewable screen at the moment. Once you put option seven, it's going to ask you whether you have the data or the summary statistics. Remember, if you have things like x-bar, you have summary statistics. So you're going to highlight stats and then push down to where it gets the standard deviation entered. Okay, so I'm just going to move my calculator over here so we can see that stuff. So we're going to look here. It looks like our standard deviation is 3.4. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my calculator 3.4 for the standard deviation. Push down here, enter the x-bar, and the x-bar is 81. So I'll type 81. And then it has the end value, which is 31. And then lastly, the confidence level. And you can see our confidence level is 98%, so I'm going to do 0.98 there. 
highlight calculate, hit enter, and I get the answer 79 or 79.579 up to 82.421. Okay, so if you round it off, it's basically you know 79.6 to 82.4, and that's our final solution. Okay, so the graphing calculator does this process very simply, and uh, it's one of the easiest things you can do in the graphing calculator, and it really solves the problem a lot faster than doing it by hand.